Before we shall start today's topic, we should know the meaning of following words. Rest. A body is said to be at rest if it does not change its position with time with respect to its surroundings. Motion. A body is said to be in motion if it changes its position with time with respect to its surroundings. Velocity. The time rate of change of displacement is called velocity. Uniform motion. When a particle has equal displacements in equal intervals of time, howsoever small this time interval may be, it is said to have a uniform motion. The acceleration for a particle in uniform motion would be zero. Momentum, an indicator of the impact capacity of a moving body. We have P, that is momentum, is equal to mv. Acceleration, time rate of change of velocity of a particle equals its acceleration. Vector, a physical quantity that needs both a magnitude and a direction for its specification. Vector algebra, the branch of mathematics that deals with computations involving addition, subtraction and multiplication of vectors, inertia. An inherent property of all objects, an object continues its state of rest or uniform motion unless and until a non-zero external force acts on it. Impulse. Impulse is the rate of change of linear momentum. Equations of motion. A set of equations relating initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time elapsed and distance travelled. These are used for calculation of any of the physical quantities mentioned for a moving object. Laws of motion. There are three laws of formulated by Newton to show the cause of motion. They are stated as Newton's first law of motion is every body continues to be in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled by some external force to act otherwise. Newton's second law of motion, the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. We can then write F is equal to dp by dt, that is rate of change of linear momentum equal to ma. Newton's second law for a body of constant mass can also be expressed as the net force acting on a body is equal to the product of body mass and the resulting acceleration of the body. Newton's third law of motion is to every action there is always an equal and opposite reaction. This course serves as an introduction to the different types of forces we encounter in our daily life. As we know, there are four fundamental forces in nature. Only the gravitational and electrical forces are relevant in the context of mechanics. So let's start with what is force? Force is a push or pull which either cause or tends to cause motion of a body or oppose the motion or changes the direction, shape and size of the body. There are basically two types of forces which are commonly encountered in mechanics. Number one is field forces, number two is contact forces. Field forces are those forces which can influence from a distance that is without coming in contact or we can say action at a distance. Some examples of field forces are gravitational force. The gravitational force on a body is a pull that is directed towards another body. Like this ball, it attracts towards this table while falling down due to gravitational force. Electrical force, this is the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges. Like if you rub a scale with your hairs, then the scale attracts the bits of paper placed on this table. This is due to electrical force. Magnetic force. The magnetic force is the force of attraction or repulsion between the poles of a magnet or between a magnet and other materials. 
For example, here is a magnet and a key. You can take any other material. Now, if I bring this magnet close to this key, it gets attracted towards the magnet due to magnetic force. Contact forces. Contact force are described by Newton's laws of motion as with all other forces in dynamics. Some examples of contact forces shown in this picture. Like a contact force exert between mass mg and the string to which it is tied. Similarly, a contact force exerts between mass mg and a spring to which it is hanged. A contact force exert between glass rod and hand. A contact force exert between finger and that object which is tried to be dipped in water by finger. All these examples are shown here in this picture. Other examples of contact forces are friction, air resistance, normal force, tension, etc. These are discussed here one by one. So what is friction? It is force exerted on a body when the body slides or attempts to slide along a surface. This force acts parallel to the surface at the contact and is usually directed opposite to the motion or impending motion of the body. We will discuss on friction in next session. Now come to another type of contact force that is air resistance. The air resistance or air drag is a type of frictional force that acts upon objects when they travel through the air. The force of air resistance opposes the motion of an object. For example, a parachute works by creating a large air resistance or friction opposite to motion as it moves down, as shown in this given video of a parachute moving down. Next is normal force, N. When a body presses against a surface, the surface push on the body with a force that is perpendicular to the surface called normal force as shown in the figure. It is electromagnetic in nature. Tension. The tension force is the force that is transmitted through a string, rope, cable or wire when it is pulled tight by forces acting from opposite ends. The tension force is directed along the length of the wire and pulls equally on the objects on the opposite ends of the wire that is directed away from the mass. It is electromagnetic in nature and arises due to the intermolecular bonds of the wire or string. Spring force, which is represented by Fs, the spring force is the force exerted by a compressed or stretched spring on an object that is attached to it. A spring force acts in a direction to restore the relaxed state and thus it is called as restoring force. As shown in this picture, when a spring remains unstretched, spring force is zero. When there is a positive displacement, then a negative spring force is there. When a spring is compressed or extended by an external force, a restoring force is generated. This force is usually proportional to the compression or elongation for small displacements. The spring force F is written as F equal to minus Kx, where X is the displacement and K is the force constant. The negative sign denotes the force is opposite to the displacement from the unstretched state. For an inextensible string, the force constant is very high. The restoring force in a string is called tension. It is customary to use a constant tension T throughout the string. This assumption is true for a string of negligible mass. Now we come to weight and how it is different from mass. Weight is the force by which the body is pulled to the earth centers. And it is variable due to change in the magnitude of gravitational force applied by the earth. Now we shall see how weight is different from mass of the body. As this question makes us confused many times that what is mass and what is weight. As in common practice, we say that my weight is 55 kg. Do you think it is right statement? No, it is not right. 
because weight is not measured in kilograms. Actually, it is mass. And for weight, we have to multiply this value by value of g of that place as value of g varies from place to place. So here is difference between weight and mass. Weight. Weight is a measure of how strongly gravity pulls on that matter. Mass. Mass is a measure of how much matter an object has. Or weight can be defined as a body's relative mass or the quantity of matter contained by it giving rise to a downward force, the heaviness of a person or thing. While mass is defined as the quantity of matter in a body regardless of its volume or any force acting on it. Weight is variable due to change in the magnitude of the gravitational force applied by the earth. While mass is an intrinsic property of a body as it remains the same everywhere in the universe. Weight represented by W is equal to mass into gravitational acceleration represented by small g while mass is denoted by capital M. Weight can be zero if there is no gravitational force acting on the body like that in a space. Mass can never be zero for then the body will have no existence. Weight can be increased when there is more gravitational impact and decreased when there is less gravitational impact while mass is indestructible. Weight is measured by a spring balance while mass is measured by a common balance. Weight is a vector and is directed towards the center of the earth while mass is a scalar and has no direction dependency. Thus, if we would travel to the moon, our weight would change because the pull of gravity is weaker there than on earth but our mass would stay the same because we are still made up of same amount of matter. Next is viscous drag. In fluid dynamics, drags sometimes called air resistance, a type of friction or fluid resistance. Another type of friction or fluid friction is a force acting opposite to the relative motion of any object moving with respect to surrounding fluid. This can exist between two fluid layers or surfaces or a fluid can a solid surface unlike other resistive forces which are nearly independent of velocity. Drag forces depend on velocity. Drag force is proportional to the velocity for a laminar flow and the squared velocity for a turbulent flow. Even though the ultimate cause of a drag is viscous friction, the turbulent drag is independent of viscosity. Drag forces always decrease fluid velocity relative to the solid object in the fluid's path. Fluid mechanics that deals with fluid flow, that is the natural signs of fluids, liquids or gases in motion. Here, in viscous drag, we see three difficult words, laminar flow, turbulent flow and viscosity. Let's understand the meaning of these three words. In fluid dynamics, laminar flow or streamlined flow occurs when a fluid flows in parallel layers with no disruption between the layers. As shown in this picture, where an object moving through a fluid experiences a force in the direction opposite to its motion. In fluid dynamics, turbulence or turbulent flow is the flow system characterized by chaotic changes in pressure and flow velocity. That is, scattered changes or we can say disorderly changes in pressure and flow velocity. For example, here is a picture of submarine shows the turbulent water flow over it. And the another picture shows turbulence from an airplane wing. The viscosity of a fluid is a measure of its tendency to oppose the relative motion between different layers of the liquid in motion. For liquids, it corresponds to the informal concept of thickness. For example, honey has a much higher viscosity than water. Here is a video which gives a viscosity demonstration. 
in which the yellow substance has higher viscosity than the clear liquid and also you see that the yellow liquid while falling down forms layers as compared to clear liquid. Another type of contact force is thrust. The force applied on a surface in a direction perpendicular or normal to the surface is called thrust. Force and thus thrust is measured in the international system of units that is SI as the Newton which is represented by a symbol capital N and represents the amount needed to accelerate 1 kilogram of mass at the rate of 1 meter per second. For example, like here in this picture, forces on an aerofoil cross section is shown. A fixed wing aircraft generates forward thrust when air is pushed in the direction opposite to flight. A motorboat generates thrust or reverse thrust when the propellers are turned to accelerate water backwards or forwards. The resulting thrust pushes the boat in the opposite direction to the sum of the momentum change in the water flowing through the propeller. A rocket is propelled forward by a thrust force equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the time rate of momentum change of the exhaust gas accelerated from the combustion chamber through the rocket engine nozzle. For vertical launch of a rocket, the initial thrust at lift off must be more than the weight. Next is buoyancy. In science, buoyancy also known as up thrust. It is an upward force exerted by a fluid that opposes the weight of an immersed object. In a column of fluid, pressure increases the depth as a result of the weight of the overlying fluid. Thus, the pressure at the bottom of a column of fluid is greater than at the top of the column. Similarly, the pressure at the bottom of an object submerged in a fluid is greater than at the top of the object. This pressure difference results in a net upward force of the object. The magnitude of that force exerted is proportional to the pressure difference. And is equivalent to the weight of the fluid that would otherwise occupy the volume of the object that is the displaced fluid as explained by Archimedes principle according to which any object wholly or partially immersed in a fluid is bowed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object that is buoyancy is equal to weight of displaced fluid. For this reason, an object whose density is greater than that of the fluid in which it is submerged tends to sink. If the object is either less dense than the liquid or is shaped appropriately as in a boat, the force can keep the object afloat. This can occur only in a reference frame which either has a gravitational field or is accelerating due to a force other than gravity defining a downward direction, that is a non-inertial reference frame. In a situation of fluid statics, the net upward buoyancy force is equal to the magnitude of the weight of fluid displaced by the body. The center of buoyancy of an object is the centroid of the displaced volume of the fluid, as shown in this given picture. Note that the object is floating because the upward force of buoyancy is equal to the downward force of gravity. Another example is of a metallic coin floats in a mercury due to the buoyancy force upon it and appears to float higher because of the surface tension of the mercury. Another type of force is centripetal force. The word centripetal is derived from Latin word centra which means center and pitter means to seek. That is, a centripetal force is a force that makes a body follow a curved path. Its direction is always perpendicular to the motion of the body and towards the fixed point of the instantaneous center of the curvature of the path. Isaac Newton described it as a force by which bodies are drawn 
or impelled or in any way tend towards a point as to a center. In Newtonian mechanics, gravity provides the centripetal force responsible for astronomical orbits. One common example involving centripetal force is the case in which a body moves uniform speed along a circular path. The centripetal force is directed at right angles to the motion and also along the radius towards the center of the circular path. The magnitude of the centripetal force on an object of mass m moving at tangential speed v along a path with radius of curvature r is f is equal to m a c equal to m v square upon r where a c is the centripetal acceleration. The direction of the force is towards the center of the circle in which the object is moving. So this is all about types of forces. Let's summarize it. Force is not always in the direction of motion depending on the situation. F may be along V that is velocity opposite to V, normal to V or may make some other angle with V. In every case it is parallel to acceleration. Second is if V is equal to 0 at n instant that is if a body is momentarily at rest. It does not mean that force or acceleration are necessarily zero at that instant. For example, when a ball thrown upward reaches its maximum height where V is equal to zero, but the force continues to be its weight mg and the acceleration is not zero but a small g. Third is force on a body at a given time is determined by the situation at the location of the body at that time. Force is not carried by the body from its earlier history of motion. The moment after a stone is released out of an accelerated train, there is no horizontal force or acceleration on the stone. If the effects of the surrounding air are neglected, the stone then has only the vertical force of gravity. Fourth is the different terms like friction, normal reaction, tension, air resistance, viscous drag, thrust, buoyancy, weight, centripetal force all stand for force in different contents. Thank you.